If the guy wasn't launching rockets into space, I really think there's not much else that gives him credibility. Tesla is, their designs are way out of date. Self-driving is way out of date. Twitter has been cratered. Boring didn't go anywhere. Like people are going to think I'm insane. He's the richest guy in the world. And you know, it seems out of touch to make fun of him, but like, give me a break. He needs to get focused and get off his ketamine high and get off his Twitter fucking account and get back to work. You're listening to the Startup Podcast. This is a Reacts episode. Industry insiders having frank debates about the latest tech, politics, and business news. Whether you're a founder, investor, or operator in a startup, you'll gain insights into how current events connect to broader themes and trends that impact your startup, your investments, and your day-to-day -day operational decisions. The conversation starts now. Welcome to this special bonus mini Reacts episode of the Startup Podcast, Chris. We're recording anyway, and Tesla just announced the new RoboTaxi, and we thought, why don't we get in there and react to that? So I'll just set this up and tell you a little bit about what's been announced, and then, Chris, I'd love to get your take. So at the We Robot event that the Tesla held yesterday uh, at the Warner Brothers Studio in Burbank, California, Tesla unveiled a new vehicle called the Cybercab, and that, that's actually not necessarily what I was expecting. So it is a new car. It's not just a Model Y that's sort of tricked up. It is a new car called the Cybercab. It has gullwing doors, a bit more of the styling cues from the Cybertruck. No steering wheel, no pedals. So it's, in other words, it's custom designed as a robo-taxi. Apart from that, it was promised to have induction charging rather than a port. I don't know why that is interesting. And it will be in production in 2026. And then Elon Musk said, before 2027. And I tend to be a little optimistic with timeframes. Also, interestingly, this is going to continue to rely, Chris, just on the visual processing and AI. Every other autonomous vehicle company uses these multi-sensory arrays of LiDAR and radar, as well as visual. Tesla already in their so-called full self-driving is visual only. And so what's interesting with this robo-taxi is that it is continuing down that line of relying only on visual inputs to drive. So... What do we make of this? Well, yeah, I got a, I got a whole lot to say about this. F firstly, you know, Elon's been promising self-driving robo taxi, whatever, since 2016. I live in San Francisco. We already have autonomous robo driving, self-driving taxis. It's called Waymo. They're in multiple cities in the U S and they're rolling out more and more quickly now in partnership with Uber. So basically it's Google Waymo technology distributed and operationalized by Uber. And so. This idea that, you know, Elon Musk is shattering the earth is, is no longer true in this category. It's, it's already a real thing and he's way, way behind. That's number one. Number two, the event itself is way overdue. They've pushed it back and pushed it back and pushed it back. And it was like literally all style, no substance. Um, you know, beautiful backlot of Warner Brothers or whatever, amazing lighting, amazing, you know, whatever showmanship. But the content was just vapid. Um, there's no details about the cars. They just kind of drove around. Like, why, why does it have two seats? They're not four, right? What, like, why? Why is? Can you? Is there any explanation? No. Why does it look like a cyber truck? That was a weird one-off. Why is that the new style of Tesla cars everywhere? The only thing that was kind of was self-evident to me is the induction charging. Actually, which you asked about is because if they want these things to be an autonomous fleet looking after themselves, they need to be able to charge themselves, and they don't need. To, they don't want someone to have to plug the damn thing in. There's no details about the logistics. As someone who worked at Uber, more than half the company was operations and logistics, right? Who's going to look after them? Who's going to own them? What happens when, they, when someone throws up in the car? Uh, where are these inductive charging stations? He didn't even talk about the cleaning. Like they had this um, slide about how they're going to have this robotic cleaning system, which was probably the most interesting thing in the whole like logistics category. And he didn't even mention it on stage. It was just kind of in the background, like he forgot to talk about it. There's no details about real timing. It's just his usual nonsense timelines of one year, two year, three year before 20, like whatever. No details about the user experience. Are they partnering with Uber? Are they part building their own app? Where's the like distribution? And the event was like five minutes long. Like pu the, the wait time for the event was an hour. They said it was going to be at 7 p.m. It was at 8 p.m. And he came out, you know, with his leather jacket, said nothing and then left. And they're like, let's party. It's like, what are you doing, dude? So look, yeah. I think the whole thing was profoundly disappointing. The stock is down. You know, you could argue it's down, you know, sell the news. It's, you know, it's of course down, but look, the, the, here's the real thing. 
you know, he starts off every damn talk with, you know, about vision and dreaming and about we don't want the dystopian future, we want the utopian future, and talks about abundance economy. It's hard to believe Elon Musk is going to generate the non-dystopian utopian future when he's the, the command, you know, the chief troll and driving as much polarization as anybody else. And so, like, dude, the cognitive dissonance between your rhetoric and your businesses are, um, if the guy wasn't launching rockets into space, I really think there's not much else that gives him credibility. Tesla is, their designs are way out of date. Self-driving is way out of date. Like, tw Twitter has been cratered. Boring didn't go anywhere. Like, at the moment, you know, people are going to think I'm insane. He's the richest guy in the world. And, you know, it seems out of touch to make fun of him. But, like, give me a break. He needs to get focused and get off his ketamine high and get off his Twitter fucking account and get back to work. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was embarrassing, right, Chris? Like, he contains multitudes. I, I think... I think it was Emil that said, Elon contains multitudes. And, you know, there's Rocket Elon, who's pretty great. There's former Tesla Elon, who was also pretty great. Then there is Twitter Elon, who is a horrible troll. And then there is modern, like, current Tesla Elon. And he is, he's like Adam Newman. We, we talked about Adam Newman in the past, right? He knows how to put on a showy event, but it is all just a giant head fake. Like, let's list all the things that are wrong with this. First of all, like you said, Waymo is just quietly doing its thing while Elon has been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And now he's announced this thing and he says, you know, 2026, 2027. So even with his historically optimistic timelines that haven't been delivered, he's saying this thing's not going to be here for another two and a half years, right? So it's just pure vaporware. But also he's not grappling with any of the actual challenges of creating an autonomous vehicle. Instead, he's focusing on showy stuff. Like, you're a car guy, I'm not a car guy, but I know that every year they have motor shows where every car manufacturer on earth can create a cool looking concept car that's not manufacturing ready, that's never going to actually see the light of day as a road vehicle. Making a concept car is easy. Showing off this thing without a steering wheel is like an absolute zero. It, it makes no sense, right? Like, it, it shows nothing about the progress towards a robo taxi. Like, why can't it just be a bunch of Model 3s anyway? Like I said, the induction charging, you talked about the operations, right? And, you know, the idea of the induction charger would be that, you know, these things could charge themselves without a human operator. But you've been at Uber. I've got a friend who's quite high up at Waymo. And, you know, I was talking to him about the challenges they have at Waymo and why the unit economics are not that much more compelling necessarily or not easily more compelling than having a human driver is all that labor that at Uber or in a taxi, the driver just did, right? cleaning up the vomit, dealing with mechanical issues, yeah, charging the thing, refueling the thing, and so on. Like, charging is the least of your problems. And, you know, you, you mentioned at least they've got some sort of cleaning module. If that was ready, if that was really the revolution, then that's what they would have talked about. But instead, there's no technological progress. There's no manufacturing progress. <laughs> there, there's no anything. There's just a bunch of talk and a bunch of utopian dazzle. And... Yeah, it, it is embarrassing. And Tesla is, you know, a lot of people still say they have the best EVs, but that lead is narrowing very quickly. And there's just no tangible progress on this stuff. So it's embarrassing. And I wonder if a part of him was embarrassed. The optics are so interesting, right? He rolls up in one of these cabs, these taxis. <laughs> he walks up, takes the mic and gets on stage. And he clearly seemed like he, he just sort of showed up at the last minute for the party. I mean, that's, that's what it looked like. And he was like reading from the script and, and kind of just stuttering his way through the same kind of vapid promises he's been giving for ages. Yeah, it, it doesn't make, the form factor of the car doesn't make any sense. Like what, why two seats? There's a reason. It's irrelevant though, anyway. It's relevant because none of the logistics have been figured out, right? And, and you know, at Uber, we used to talk about this idea that even with an autonomous fleet, you still need the human drivers because... The autonomous fleet is kind of like this baseline of supply, and then you need to be able to handle the surges. And so Uber would have this huge advantage, we thought, that with autonomous vehicles, we would be able to layer them onto our supply and we'd be able to drive the unit economics down, but it would not actually disrupt drivers because there was just so much demand in this kind of Uber-powered world. You know, a Tesla fleet is going to have so few assets on the road in any real city. Forget San Francisco. In San Francisco, every second car is a damn Tesla. But in real cities, there aren't any Teslas, not that many and not enough, right? And so the ETAs will be long. The cost to move the asset from where it is to where you are will be costly. There's no depots, no logistics. I mean, it's, it's insane. It's insane. And 
This is a very dangerous position for you and I to take because Elon has proved all these haters wrong year after year. He's always late, but it's always ultimately pulls through. But I think, as you've said, there's a very different Elon we're dealing with right now. If he was a Tesla every day or every other day, then maybe. But with him on Twitter, running Twitter, running SpaceX, running Tesla, and running his own psychology into the ground, um, I just don't see how this happens in the short term uh, in any meaningful way. Yeah, that's right. So it's, I mean, just actually, that's, that's one other thing you mentioned is if I recall correctly, in, in previous calls about the robotaxi, Elon's whole concept was that all the existing Teslas that people own were going to be the robotaxis, right? He, I think he called, you know, the, the greatest value unlock in a product post-purchase, you know. He's still on that. So he's saying all the cars will become accessible to this network. Like if you were really clever, if he was really clever and paying attention, I think the robo taxi should have been the new cheaper model, the lower price point model with four seats that he could sell mass market that could get added to the suite of cars that could also be added to the robo taxi network. Instead, it's like this fit for purpose, non race car race, race car. Like why is it two doors with only two seats? It doesn't make any sense. People go out at night, they take, you know, two friends with them. The car is completely fucking useless. So like, what is the point of it? And then the robo van, which he kept on calling Robovan as a joke, like you don't get on stage and announce your new product and, and screw up the pronunciation of your name, of the name of the product. He's like, oh, Robo Robovan, Robovan, Robovan. Oh, some people also call it the robo van. Ha ha. And it's like, ha, that's so funny. Do you want to show us inside? What is like, what is the format, the layout, the. You know, what's the density? What are the unit economics? How long until you release one? You know, like, is it multi-purpose? Could we use it also for a real bus? Like, if you were pitching this thing to a VC, you would be laughed out of the room. That's what it comes down to. This thing was yeah. hopelessly amateurish and just silly. And the only reason that anybody pays any attention is because it's Elon Musk. And I think it's about time that we stop doing that. Yeah, I think the most interesting part of the entire event were the, were the robots, the humanoid robots that standing on two feet, the bipedal robots, they've got them walking around untethered in uncontrolled environments, meaning people, you know, all around them and poking and prodding them. I think that's pretty interesting. They had them serving drinks and stuff. Again, that's not on camera. So I can't see to what degree they're serving drinks, to what degree they're doing well, to what degree there, there isn't a bartender standing next to them, handing them things. But the fact that those things look materially more polished now that there is a whole fleet of them walking into the thing he looked you know that was kind of an iron man-esque um piece of it if he had them all lined up on stage it would have literally been like iron man 2 or whatever but again the no specs no timing no actual detail he's like oh this is not a a canned video they're, they're going to be walking amongst you fine but i'm not in the audience right like there's millions of people who want to see this thing investors and, and so on show us what they're doing uh, rather than like snazzy sizzle, you know, cuts B-roll that then they cut away back, back to the, the end of the stream. So frustrating, very, very frustrating. All right. Well, it was fun to have that discussion, folks. If you have any opinions, questions, let us know what you think in the comments and we'd love to join the conversation there. All right, Chris, thanks for joining me for this little bonus episode. See you later, guys. Today's episode of the Startup Podcast was brought to you by Vanta. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, and more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Plus, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with a customer-facing trust center, all powered by Vanta AI. Over 7,000 global companies already use Vanta. Why don't you? Get $1,000 off Vanta when you go to vanta.com slash TSP. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash TSP for the startup podcast to get $1,000 off. All right. Am I annoyed? Is it obvious?